Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Today we have an ECM 2006 Legacy uh, for Ryan. And the problem with this one is... Misfires on... I don't remember which cylinders, I think 6 was mentioned. And... No Tacho. Actually, not at No Tacho. Uh, the, the problem with this one is that the, the gauge just keeps bouncing. So I don't think it's an issue with uh, ECM, but we can check that. So, oh God. So let's do so. We have no prior repair attempt. So that's good. And uh, we have some liquid. Not necessarily damage, but there was liquid here. There was a liquid here at some point. Uh, we have no blue color. That is good. Um, So, yeah, I don't, I don't see actual corrosion. I don't think the liquid even made it to the, to the board. Yeah, and not a lot of it. Yeah, this should be fine. Now let's connect to the Tahoe signal, which is uh, B136, this one, and pin number 22. And, um, as I said, I, I don't think there is an issue here, because the needle is jumping. And we got about 45 kilo. 45k to ground so it's all right uh, if there's an issue um, then we've uh, we have open line uh, there technically also could be a short but if this signal this pin is shorting to ground uh, there's nothing really we can do because this goes directly from the from the microcontroller or whatever that is and just through the resistor so sometimes that resistor is faulty and then we can we can replace the resistor and it should work fine but that would show as open line if it shows up as short there is likely nothing you can do with that okay let's do ic608 now recently on um, in the comment section, someone, um, someone expressed that this is a five-minute repair, and I make it unnecessarily long. And I do make my repairs kind of longer than they need to be. I just kind of take my time. <laughs> I'm not rushing. But five minutes, can you do it in five minutes? Uh, yes, you could. You could, but you shouldn't be charging money if you did it in five minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, the, the reason it takes longer, in my case, is because we cannot test it on the bench. Right? It's not like I can connect it to the engine and and check that all uh, cylinders are firing. So there goes um, a lot of visual inspection. And I need to I need to inspect every pin to make sure that it visually uh, meets the criteria. And then I seal those chips and I always say that this is not exactly necessary. But it's it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt anything and it might help. 
that kind of thing. So you could technically skip that step, so that would save you a few minutes, well, maybe five, maybe less. Uh, you probably don't have to clean the conformal coding as I'm doing right now. You probably could just heat it up and uh, you know, take it off. Clean this other real quick. Maybe replace the chip. If you don't have to clean the chip, you're replacing the chip. That's a little faster. The chips doesn't come pre bold but so you do have to apply some solder on it, but you don't have to clean it in the previous solder. Right? So replacement is actually slightly faster. So my conclusion is that maybe this could be done or I could do it in uh, uh, 15 minutes, maybe, oh, wrong nozzle. But that's not the point. Why would I want to do it this quickly? All right. It's another race. And the, the bottom line is that there's no way to test it on the bench. So I like to move slowly and methodically, ensuring that the repair is performed in the same way I perform it to everybody uh, for everybody because that works I have a good track record of uh, repairs that's why I don't like to change much in my process right I use the same temperatures same airflows because I know it works right and maybe I could in in increase the temperature increase the airflow it, do some other stuff, maybe heat it from the bottom instead of heating it from the top, I don't know. But I don't want to change stuff because we know this procedure works. It's empirically proven <laughs> that it works. So yeah, maybe half an hour. Yeah, half an hour is kind of a top time for me. Um, I have never done it faster than in half an hour and half an hour is um, pretty good timing in my view, pretty good timing. Alright, <coughs> let's get to it. See, and I forgot about the captain tape. <laughs> oh, another thing, someone said that you don't need the captain tape on it. And yeah, I'm not saying you necessarily do need it. Uh, it's gonna explode if you if you don't use it. But then again, why do I have to put so much stress on these components when I can just reduce it? Especially the polymer cap over here. And that's what I protect the most. So the hardware just slides around it instead of pushing temperature in. Because if it gets too hot, it'll explode. No big deal, we can replace it. But I prefer not having to do that. I would actually be curious to see the author of that comment actually doing this in five minutes. <clears throat> and also putting out uh, a good work, the working, you know, so the car works for longer than two weeks, right?
and we run out of battery on the transmitter so yes this is my new audio the quality should be relatively slightly lower but at least the sound isn't sanitized so it's not computerized that microphone that I was using before it's a good, good microphone and you know every time it touches anything or bumps into something it's really loud really loud noise and not to mention that it's um, you know, it's on the shirt so it's easy to just kind of bump it and, and stuff and it's closer to the soldering uh, hardware station when I'm soldering uh, than my mouth so it picks up more of a uh, heat gun sound than my voice so this is supposed to be better mm -hmm. and it's blinking but I need I need proper batteries for it because I'm using just double A's, standard double A's that's not enough for this device <laughs> alrighty this is the repair um, was it Ryan? Ryan thank you very much for your business thank you guys very much for watching <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. And I shall see you in the next one.